Much of my research focuses on the marketing finance interface, uh, meaning how marketing actions impact on the firm's performance, uh, particularly financial performance. Uh, one of the studies that I'm currently working on uh, tries to explain this phenomena of glamour stocks, meaning gl stocks that have uh, exhibit sustained mispricing. Uh, the financial literature has recently started to approach this puzzle by looking at the, the behavioral linkages of all the different uh, agents in the financial markets. Uh, what we bring to the table along this behavioral stream of research is the marketing angle. And we believe we have provided an explanation for this conundrum by offering a linkage between the consumer and product marketplace and the financial markets. We use this, these two dimensions of a brand, familiarity and prestige, to link consumers' perceptions with the stock market uh, agent's behavior. Uh, and we, in doing so, we're separating between an informational and a behavioral linkage between these two markets. So to paraphrase Peter Lynch, um, buy what you know, which would be your uh, informational approach, more rational approach, and also adding to it a buy what you love, which will be this behavioral, more emotional approach. Our empirical analyses uh, are aligned with the financial research analyses that are done and are based on a Fama French three-factor model, particularly on the loading on the HML factor, the I minus low, which captures and separates between value and growth stocks. And the financial literature uh, believes that this captures either risk or sustained mispricing, which is this phenomena uh, of glamour stocks. What we find in our empirical analysis is evidence, strong evidence that indeed those stocks that own brands with the highest prestige levels are associated with glamour stocks. So in short, glamour brands are connected with glamour stocks. Three interesting little wrinkles on these findings uh, are the following. First, uh, we don't seem to observe differences in this HML loading across different levels of perceived brand quality, which is interesting. Second, we find that uh, actually the HML loading that is capturing this mispricing for the highest level of perceived brand prestige uh, disappears at also the highest level of quality. So in short, once consumers are deeply aware and familiar with the brands, then this link between the consumer marketplace and the financial markets seems to disappear. And one last very interesting linkage uh, is the fact that, or a surprising result, when institutional holdings for the stock that we are observing are I, the link also disappears. And I think this was the strongest evidence that indeed there is a behavioral linkage between the consumer uh, product marketplace and the financial market. In short, uh, and in conclusion, uh, independent of which, which view you, you, you espouse, either a risk or a mispricing interpretation, uh, and we want to stay away from that argument, which is not ours, is finances, um, these findings have very important implications, uh, namely for the required rate of returns that investors uh, require of stocks, that have implications for discount rates and ultimately for cost of capital. And more important for marketing, it provides additional evidence of the strong linkages and deep linkages between the consumer marketplace and the financial markets. And perhaps will help elevate the marketing voice inside the C-suite.